This old free rescue desktop PC from the street boots up in only 20 seconds with Linux and beats Windows 10 by at least 15 seconds with an SSD of course. Coming up, roll the intro. Hey name tags and welcome, this is Ash from Heal My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech, anything from computers to domestic appliances. Also share some entrepreneur tips to help you save money, make money and become a better version of yourself so you can unleash your true potential. So smash that like button and consider subscribing and enable the bell icon notification for future video release. So today I'm going to show you how I rescued this desktop PC from the streets. So this is essentially a... PC that was dumped, being thrown away, took it home, opened it up, seems to be working. I did some minor modifications, minor upgrades, and recently it also featured in a recent video whereby I diagnosed the power supply was a problem. I've put an SSD on it, upgraded the RAM, and I've put two operating systems on it, Linux and Windows. So I'm gonna show you what I did, how I did it, and whether you should do the same thing, especially at the moment, since it's almost Black Friday. Ironically, should you go and look for an old uh, desktop PC, which may even last you longer than those brand new crap you may buy from uh, Black Friday. Do excuse the um, rough footage, because I'm filming this from my phone, one-handed, unscripted, my family is sick. I was supposed to do a live session on YouTube today, but this is not going to happen, okay? Instead, I thought I would give you a value for your time and show you this. Now, currently, uh, we are in Linux, which this is Linux Mint, uh, Linux Mint 19, I believe, or 18. It's actually 19 XFCE. This is a 64-bit system, which is working perfectly fine. Graphics is working fine. Uh, we are browsing internet and the kids actually use this to do their homework it has not given us any any issue at all like i mentioned before before um i actually upgraded or changed this power supply it was working fine right so originally what we had in there was a motherboard from asus m2 N68-LA, and this is an AM2 Plus motherboard. The CPU is an Athlon Dual Core 6400+. Plus. This motherboard should, in theory, also uh, hold a Phenom X4 9600. Unfortunately, I did get one, but it did not boot up. I don't know whether the issue was the processor or this motherboard potentially is not compatible with upgraded CPUs. This is a problem with boutiques or, um, you know, from specific um, vendors, well, proprietary um, hardware, sometimes they don't support upgraded CPUs. It had two gigabyte of RAM, DDR2 in there, I've upgraded to four gigabyte, but this can actually support eight gigabyte. So this might actually be a very good system for a uh, server. We'll talk about this later. Power supply was changed to an EVGA 430 watt. The stock cooler which was on there was working fine, except for me, I'm a bit sensitive to noise, so I swapped this to this very low cost, three pounds 50 um, cooler, which I had in my stock anyway. So, but the other one was working fine. Now this graphics card, this is a Asus EAH 3450, 512 megabyte of VRAM, I believe. Okay, and uh, it had a 250 gigabyte hard disk drive in there with Windows Vista. Obviously, I took that out. Who wants that anymore? I replaced it with an SSD, but not this one. There's an SSD inside, which is the um, ADATA 120 gigabyte. And this is a King Dian 240 gigabyte. The ADATA has got Linux on this, and the King Dian has got Windows 10. Okay, and the back, you've got some generic. Um, Port. We're connecting this to this um, BenQ monitor uh, through a adapter uh, DVI to VGA right now. Okay, right. So just wanted to show you that this works absolutely fine. Uh, obviously, you can see the awesome channel here, Heal My Tech. Now, I hope also you like my new thumbnails. I've been working on them and I'm giving you a tutorial on how to do these thumbnails because this is really important when it comes to YouTube. Okay, so let's switch this off. I'm going to show you certain other little tips and tricks I've picked up over the years. Now, this has got two operating systems on there right now. And as a rule of thumb, 
I do not like anymore to put two operating systems on the same disk because it's called dual, obviously dual booting or dual OS setup, but I've had a lot of problems with this. I prefer to put, an, um, even if I want to use more than one operating system, I will put them on different disks at the same time, okay? Now pressing uh, ESC would go into boot menu. What I wanted to show you is two things. One, uh, how quickly can it log into Windows? We'll try to do a little test here. Um, right, so the A data will pick that and we'll set our timer. So as soon as I click enter, let's go for it. Okay, actually I made a mistake. This is not the Windows, this is Linux. So we'll just measure the Linux boot up time first. Right, like I was mentioning before, uh, okay, we'll do it on the Linux. And we got 13 seconds. Yep, there you go, 15 seconds and we just booted it onto the login screen. So I'm gonna put in my password and see how long it takes to boot up completely. We'll restart this and ready, steady, go. And bang, onto the login screen at 20 seconds. So 20 seconds, not bad for a 10 year old desktop PC. All I did was replace the SSD, and that made a huge difference to the boot up time. 20 seconds, we are booting into a Linux freaking desktop. This is awesome, okay? Obviously, this Linux is 19, Linux uh, Mint 19 XFCE, okay? It's a low spec distribution. If you put probably something a bit more demanding, it might take a bit longer, but still, the SSD makes the whole difference. 10 year old PC guys, this is amazing, all right? So just as a comparison, what we'll do, we'll restart, but this time we are going to boot into Windows, okay? And I'm gonna reset that. Some of you may argue that this is not a free PC anymore since I've had to get these parts to upgrade, which costs money, obviously. So number one, if you're like myself, you tinker with computers a lot, you may always have some parts lying around, so that could be free. But even if you have to buy them, do remember these parts are interchangeable. You can always put them in a different build, so it's not really money wasted. Now this time we're going to select King Dian because it's got the windows. And let's press ID, steady, go. Okay. And I think um, the Linux will beat Windows. Now splash screen, we're not at the logging, logging screen yet. If we do, I'll press it down. What do you guys think? Bang. Okay, actually we're not at the logging screen yet still. It hasn't given me the option to put my name in. So, still going. We have gone past 25 seconds, 26 seconds. Okay, stick it a lot longer. Guys, I think we have a winner. Linux, definitely. There you go. So this was 35 seconds. I stopped it just after. 35 seconds to boot up into Windows, okay? Linux, one, Windows, nil. Woo! No jokes aside, but uh, I'm not a fan boy, just saying, you know. For, obviously, for low-power desktops, for older desktops, and even laptops, Linux is the way to go. There's no doubt about this. Now, a problem that I had with Windows, I wanted to try Windows 10. The graphics card, the automatic driver did not pick up. I tried to download some drivers from AMD using 3450 uh, driver for Windows 10, although it's supposed to be on there, it exists. It's telling me no AMD graphics driver is installed. So I tried a couple of manual drivers, but it wasn't letting me. So one thing to note, is again, this is where Linux shines over Windows for all the hardware. You may find that you will get the drivers to work better on Linux than on Windows, because Windows, Microsoft doesn't want people to be supporting all the hardware anymore. I mean, it's a business decision. Who can argue with this? Uh, you can argue if you want, but you're gonna go with the flow, right? Anyway, now, what I would want to do uh, in the near future to probably get a low-powered a graphics card, maybe the 750 Ti, and see what we can do with this bad boy in terms of gaming. I mean, if I put 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I will try to get another CPU, maybe a better one than the Athlon Dual Core 6400, uh, this might be a nice little gaming rig for 720p, certainly, but we wanna see how 
we can push it a bit further. What do you guys think? Do you guys want to see this? This free desktop PC which was rescued from the streets. Do you want to see it turn into a free gaming PC? Obviously for me it's free because a lot of the parts I will get for free or I had. But we were going to say a oh, very low cost, okay? I think it would be an awesome video. So, there you have it guys. Uh, that's all for today i really want to thank you for staying till now because this was a very rough video that i just done as usual if you want anything let me know in the comment section below i will try to do some more um, live stream tutorials once i get my setup done and once my family is better but i'm going to be making a lot more videos like these ones so like comment share and subscribe if you have not done so yet don't forget to enable the bell icon notification for future video release and also check out my other awesome videos as usual this was ash from hill my tech helping you go from newbie to techie it's been a pleasure until next time peace out